Hello, everybody. This is the Thimble Podcast, Episode 2. I'm Ben. I'm Tyler. Tyler, how do you feel about uh, using your room as the studio for this podcast? We had to move everything around. I felt better about other things. <laughs> Tyler is a very specific person, uh, so he doesn't like things getting messed with, but he's making big sacrifices for this show, so it's, it's, it's well appreciated. All right, but anyway, uh, so yes, Episode 2 of the podcast. Um, today we're going to be talking to you about stocks. We're going to go into the nitty gritty um, of stocks and how they work. Um, but our goal is also to make it clear that you know while it may seem intimidating at first, there's they're they're really not. And once you understand the basics, there's no reason why your average person can't partake in uh, investing in the stock market. So. Um, and then, you know, moving forward in the series, we plan to cover things like ETFs, we'll cover bonds. We're going to cover some um, more non-traditional, like maybe even some ETNs. That would be interesting. Gold, um, things like that. Um, but today, we're focused on stocks. So, with that, I think the first thing we want to talk about is just what the hell is a stock? Mm-hmm. Tyler, what is the most simple? If you could put a uh, describe a stock in one sentence, what would you say? Investment in a company. Investment, yeah, that's what I would think too. Investment in a company. Um, you probably hear a lot of terminology like when people talk about stocks. You hear the things like like shares, right, mm-hmm. and share price, and equity, and mm-hmm. ownership, and all these terms. Um, but really, that I mean, they all kind of a lot of them mean the same thing. If you have um, a, sh- a share of stock, so you have, go ahead. No. If you have one share of stock, you have one piece of ownership in a company. Called a stake. Called a stake, Mm -hmm. absolutely. So that's essentially what you're doing is you're becoming an owner of a company, Mm -hmm. except when we're talking about shares, it's a very small percentile. Exactly. Um, Talking about equity, talking about ownership, why do companies put out stocks? Like what's the purpose? Mm -hmm. Why would they sell their ownership? So there's a whole bunch of reasons, but the main one being it's a source of capital for them. It's a means of their own income in order for themselves to grow and take their company forward. And just to clarify, capital by capital, we're mostly referring similar to similar to equity. Also, can include debt. Okay. So and but really, they want cash. A source, yeah, right? a fundraising. Yeah. They want money that they can then um, invest in their own company. Mm-hmm. Um, as a investor, besides like the obvious, like I want to make more money on my investment. Mm-hmm. What am I expecting when I put money into a stock? You're ex- expecting, obviously, that stake in the company, but two big things. One, you know, a source of income. So will that stock rise in price? Will you be able to make a return from one you invest in and sell it at a, a greater price? And will you be able to make maybe some passive income through those dividends in certain stocks? And the other one you're looking for, again, to utilize that ownership stake. So. If we want to get in further to the weeds, we're talking about voting shares, and there's such things as being able to, you know, when the board's electing or the owners are electing, you know, a certain thing to pass through the company, you're going to have a say in whether or not the company is able to go about that decision, and uh, ultimately that affects, you know, your own. So that that money that you have is going to affect going forward, and so the more money you have invested, the more shares you have invested, the larger say you have in what decisions the company makes. So really what you're, so to even make it more simple, what you're really saying is that when you own shares of a company, the company has to give a crap about what you say. Exactly. Um, now, do, would a company give a crap if I have one share? Let's say they have 10,000 shares. Exactly. Would they, no. would they care so, about my so one share? So that's why it's not going to matter, because in the majority of companies, unless it's a brand new IPO, but even then, uh, we're talking millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of shares. So yeah. again, you're going to have a lot invested if you're having a bigger say in the company. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So I also want to talk about, um, we talk about like, you know, you buy a stock, you buy a share of stock, you buy some ownership of the company mm-hmm. to expect that money. You mentioned um, one way is that the price of the share increase. That's how you can make money. Um, what is like the foundation of why is why would a share a share price of a, of a, um, a stock why would that increase? What's making that increase? So that's ultimately the profitability of the company, and that's being able to do you know your own due diligence and see whether or not you think that company is going to be a successful company in the future. So especially with you know we hear a lot of volatility in the technology markets. Mm-hmm. Tech is a big thing in our lives today. Everyone goes right for Apple and says you know iPhone and where that's been taken in in recent times. So you're like Tesla, where automation's coming with cars, 
And we see companies being very profitable in a, a lot of these tech markets, but some, you know, go in the complete opposite way. So it's not to say one market's safer than the other, but nonetheless, we're able to gauge that, you know, in certain companies like those, they're profitable over time. They're catching on to new trends. They're able to spin off the current markets and to really capture consumer demand. And for that, if we do our due diligence and we think there's certain companies that are going to do that or are doing that, we may be able to capture some of the returns with that company because we take that small percentage ownership in that company. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, you you brought up um, the term uh, due diligence a lot, mm. and uh, you know some of us might not quite understand what you mean. Mm. What do you mean when you say due diligence? What does that really entail? So that's from the ground up. You know, some background research as if we've never even done anything on this company before. So we have no clue who they are, but just pretend you're investing in Apple, but you've never heard of them. So how do you begin to learn about them? You look toward their product. You might even research, you know, online just. Walmart, Target, oh, that's what their product is, this is the features their product has, okay, so let's learn some more about them. So you can go into, you know, where have sales gone with the products or services that they offer, um, who is the management team that owns them, or who is, where is their experience, that management team, where is their experience coming from, have they managed and run things successfully in the past, and will they do the same with this product, such as, you know, Apple. And all sorts of things here, and one of the biggest things, I think, if you really want to get into and understand from a fundamental basis is starting to read and understand the 10 Ks that they deliver. And this is a very complex form for some people that have never, you know, delved into this. It can go, you know, as nitty gritty as telling which owners are on the board and, you know, previous management positions as to where they've been and where they're transitioning their own money within the company. Or it can be high level things like what we're considering the future market outlooks to be or where we've seen our share price go or where we're investing X amount for capital expenditures and all that sort. So you're really able to understand the holistic you know, perspective of the company itself and see what their own plans are because they have to legally disclose all of this if they're a public company and if other people have shares in their company. Because again, you may be an owner in that company, but how do you facil facilitate that information between those that are actually working there and those that are just holding a smaller percentage is through things such as this 10K. Okay, yeah, perfect. I mean. That, yeah, so that's basically you just need to know what the heck you're talking about exactly. and where the heck you're putting your money. Mm -hmm. That's very important. It's, you want to avoid things like just name recognition, mm -hmm. right? Just because – now, that, that's not to say like investing in Chipotle is not generally – a safe yeah. investment because and that's the great place to start for yeah. most of us we hear you know everyday trends it's like oh well the, you know mexican food's catching on and fast mexican food is catching on so hey let's look at that i like it as a personal you know preference i like it i seem to you know find it interesting and so do my peers so hey maybe that's something that's going to catch on and that's and i think the interesting thing you brought up there is that you brought up your own preference mm -hmm. for that for Mexican food as an example. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you are a user of Apple, which a lot of people are, mm -hmm. then you're gonna be more confident in your investment in Apple as a product. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of investing in stocks is does come down to, do I have some kind of personal interest in this and yeah. that it appeals to me? Do I personally think that this is gonna be successful? Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of like, you know, looking into the company's 10Ks and I think we should talk about how do we find a 10k yeah. and where do we find this information um, you know how do we learn about these companies but I do want to you know if you like video games then yeah. take a look at investing in EA Epic or Activision yeah, or Epic exactly. or look at those things um, if you like if you're passionate about food or mm -hmm. you know I think sometimes people when they think of investment they're like they think they need to invest in like energy or oil and those are can be mm -hmm. good investments but my guess is you're gonna have to do a lot more of to do your due diligence yeah. and learn about those industries those markets so it's a it's a good you know <clears throat> we're going back to the previous episode when we're saying that thousand dollar base start that base in something you feel comfortable with yes. yourself and that you think you know other people feel comfortable with yeah. and then you if you want to start to diversify like we were briefly mentioning is maybe going into some of those other investments later on some of those other companies we might not feel as comfortable with but researching them so that we do yeah absolutely um, but going, go back, going back to your point real quickly as to where yeah. to find the 10K and how yeah, to, yeah. How to yeah, do sure, that sure, due sure. diligence is uh, actually EDGAR. So it's required, like I was saying, filing most things to the SEC through the government. Uh, EDGAR is a government website, so it's literally edgar.gov. So E-D-G-A-R, EDGAR. Is that what you're saying? E-D-G-A-R, yes. Okay. And so you go on there and you're able to type in either the company name or what is called the ticker symbol or the stock symbol. So... There can be up to, I believe, is four or five letters. Four letters. Four, 
I believe four. Four yeah. letters. Okay, so uh, except in I think special circumstances could Correct. be five. And it's a shorthand version for you know what, whatever stock we're investing in. So like we were talking about Apple is AAPL. Mm -hmm. And you just type those in if you happen to know it. Otherwise, just type in the company Apple. Uh, others might be registered under that that are smaller companies or subsidiaries, the like. Uh, but you'll, you'll just have to make sure you're specifying which one so you can sure. read through and figure out which company it really is. But nonetheless, the bigger ones are going to be coming out on top. So you uh, just go right into there. You'll be able to find, it'll say on the left-hand side, a number of different file types. And like we were saying, we're looking for the 10K file type, which is uh, disclosure annually of you know everything that's happened in the past year, everything, their background as a company, everything that's going to go forward in their projections and future earnings, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking for that file type, there's a ton of others. There's like a 425B if you're going for um, acquisitions, all that sort. And but, all these are like all these units say 10K, yeah. 425B. These are just government dis designations of these papers for different file types. For but different, different file when, types. When we're a pub, when we're an owner in a public company, the biggest one that we're concerned with is that 10K. Sure. for a very small percentage of the company. So we, we just want to figure out, you know, who they are. Yeah. And we, we click right into that, and it'll give you a PDF version where you can print it out, read all through it, and uh, go for it with yeah. your decisions. And, you know, I would even say, you know, even simpler things. I mean, that's very important. Mm -hmm. But I think even just going to a company's website. Mm -hmm. Look at their website. Look at what they're doing. What are they Definitely. saying they're going to do to the public? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we have to remember that a lot of stocks is based on speculation. It's mm -hmm. based on... I mean, it's all speculation, really. But, yeah. but I mean, it, it comes down to, do you believe in the message that this company is sending to the consumers? Do you mm -hmm. think that their messaging is going to be successful? Yeah. So, I mean, look at what they're actually doing. Analyzing their own tactics. Exactly. I mean, is, is this something that appeals to me, or can I see this appearing, appealing yeah. to the demographic that it's meant to? Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, and that's the two things. Like, you could, if you look at something and you say, well, hmm, that wouldn't sell to me, mm -hmm. but I know... 10 people in my friend group that yeah. it would sell to that could be a reason why or maybe mm -hmm. you go you know what I think this is awesome mm -hmm. and I think more people will catch on and believe this and so you can put money into that exactly. as well but um, just yeah try and understand what the, where the company is going mm -hmm. through things like their website going to Edgar looking at their 10 k yeah. 10k um Understanding where they're based in, uh, who their consumer sure. demographic is, where their outreach is. Are they connecting just domestically in the country, or are they, yeah. are they global? Do they have international ties? Are they multinational? Um, all these sorts of things. And then even sometimes, if you want to get into more of it, is how politics plays into it, sure. and uh, where they're connected there. If they're able to get past tariffs, if they have certain trade designations, yeah. if uh, you know they have to do commodities exchanges, you know. All sorts of things start to play into how the company's going to be yeah. profitable and how they're, that company's going about all these different you know, market variables to ensure they're profitable. And you know, this sounds like a ton of information to keep track of, and it can be overwhelming mm -hmm. to a point. But I do want to say that you know, when you are buying stocks, mm -hmm. you're only, you don't have to buy 30 different stocks. You don't have to buy, right. you know, you'll buy multiple shares in each company, but you don't have to have 30 different companies' shares. Mm -hmm. You can diversify in smaller ways, and therefore you can keep better track of those uh, of mm -hmm. those stocks. Um, when we talk about things further down the road, like mutual funds, that's going to mm -hmm. be where they're dealing with a lot more companies maybe than just you know five or ten. Yeah. Um, but at, if you're just doing some solo stock trading and you're just trying to purchase stocks that you believe will have mm -hmm. a good growth, you you I th you can. It's not going to be too much. It, yeah. you, it, it is manageable, and there's so many resources that we've talked about that there's no reason why. You know, you can't spend a minute, a few minutes yeah. a day reading about a company that you might well, be interested just say, in. If you don't want to take this, you know, very in-depth route, because we don't always have to. These, This might be, you know, more for startup companies, especially if we're newer investors. Sure. This might be for more companies that haven't as much traction and as much exposure as some of the bigger companies we've always heard of. So mm -hmm. we're thinking of, like, a publishing company like Net, like newspapers, articles, online media, all of that sort. And always has, you know, a big following out there. And maybe what we should look toward is, just newspaper ads or, you know, press on TV. Is this name being mentioned? In what light is this name being mentioned for this company? Uh, and just and hearing how other people have to talk about journalists. Sure. Uh, Trusting yeah. experts. Sometimes you exactly. can trust the experts. Now, because mm -hmm. um, there are people who spend their whole day, their, I mean, their whole lives are dedicated to researching these companies. Yes. Reading pu certain public... And your publication of choice. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a, most publications have a finance section. Um, 
if that's a publication you you trust or that you you enjoy reading their stuff, take a look at their finance section. <laughs> See if there's anybody who you think is looks trustworthy. Yeah. Um, and 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 listen to them. Now they're not going to be always right either, so you have to take it with a grain of salt. Everything you read. But sometimes you can trust the experts. And that goes back to what we said in the first episode of personalization. It's all sure. what tailors to you. So, you know, where do you find your grounding in what we call due diligence? How do you do your own research? Sure. And if you're already doing that with other avenues, you know, minus the investments, why don't you start carrying that over to investments and see if that, you know, is a familiar territory. And that's how you start to build on what you may not know yet and how you start to know it. The key is, I think, to get started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it can, it, it does feel like there's this mountain of information. Yeah, like that's that a ton of stuff we just went over yeah. in a few minutes. But if you get started, mm. take your time and and just just take it as it comes. Let this is not going to be an instant. Just like yeah. investing is long term, mm-hmm. this is going to be a longer term getting prepared, getting yeah, ready. Yeah, and, and, and you'll pick it up. It'll come a lot faster. Like right now, like we're saying, find an ease of transition to get through to that. And then maybe start going into all of this as more companies come into play. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that fucks with the camera. It's ready to exposure. I think we mentioned startups earlier. Um, mm-hmm. I want to tie that into talking about what some uh, people probably have heard of on the news and things like that, but the. Uh, what an IPO is. Yes. And that ties directly into startups mm-hmm. most of the time. So, um, first of all, IPO, I'll go ahead and say, IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. Mm-hmm. So, what does that mean? Yeah, Sorry. so, as, especially when it comes to startups, it's taking a company from being privatized, uh, being maybe family-owned or individually-owned, proprietorship, etc., to uh, into the public, so into which we can trade. Um, there are... People that are able to invest in these private companies early on, usually it's a higher net worth, higher dollar value into these companies, but that's a whole other story for private equity. So it's taking the private companies to a platform as to which the public can invest, you and I can invest in. And um, it's that whole process of going about that. So right now, actually, what we're hearing in the news is Lyft and Uber both battling to see which one's going to be the first to release uh, to the public on autonomous vehicles. And you know, do we think as a person that's a good investment going forward? Who's to say? But now we're going to have a say in that and be able to, you know, dictate where we're going with the company, whether or not we're going to be able to make returns on that technology interface. And so it's going to be this fun opportunity to look out for it, especially when we're looking toward the uh, uh, the process and the offering itself is um, where, where dollars are going to fluctuate, especially like in the first two months and especially in the first week. We're going to see dollar value of that stock as it releases onto the market fluctuate rapidly. And so you can capture some of what we call volatility or those bites, those spikes, those bounces, ups and ups and downs. We can capture some return on that if we're looking to trade in the short term. And then as it rides out, uh, we're either going to see, you know, maybe some gradual uptick, some stagnation, which is going forward, you know, kind of at the same level, or, you know, maybe a downturn and then eventual upturn. So sure. companies can go anywhere from there, but that's where we're really going to capture a larger risk return uh, for our portfolio. And we're really going to be able to capture, you know, the difference in how markets yes. value companies. And so that's how I want to tie that into the idea of being risk or risk, risk mm-hmm. averse. You know, so if you are someone who you feel like is a risky person yeah. and you enjoy putting money into risk, then search upcoming IPOs, just mm-hmm. do a search, come up with a list, mm-hmm. and do some research. Be like, yeah. okay, well, do I think any of these upcoming uh, IPOs, these startups are gonna be mm-hmm. successful? It can be fun, yeah. and maybe you make a buck. Maybe you make some good money mm-hmm. off that. Now, that's not to say that uh, you probably also should not have some more safer investments, ones yes. that you can more reliably count on to mm-hmm. grow. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with if you wanna yeah. take on some risk, Look up the IPOs. Just do a Google search. It's also one of the more difficult transitional periods for a company, though, because it's the first time we as the public can value this company. Sure. So granted, the banks are going to say it's worth this much, and we're going to see the stock price mm-hmm. valued at this price, but whether or not we truly feel the company is worth that, because it's the sure. first time we're ever seeing it. And so this is where, you know, is the management safe? Have we seen previous investments with them? Have they served on other boards? Um what are other companies that are currently public and market like and how successful are they? Or even in the private market. How Who's involved? Are they? You know, yes, like definitely. who who are the people in charge of this company? Have they done anything in the past? Mm-hmm. I think you I think you mentioned that when you said yeah. the boards, who's on the board. Yeah, and especially with the with the banks, one of the bigger things is to uh, a lot of more reputable companies or companies that are going to be more profitable are yeah. going through these larger tier banks. So yeah. names like Goldman Sachs, names like, you know, uh, 
Credit Swiss or Deutsch or not Deutsch anymore actually, yeah. but names like you know J.P. Morgan Chase or all those big names out there, uh, you really want to look for you know credibility, and that's just one way to latch on is because we see you know the bank partnering with this company mm-hmm. is maybe that lends more credence to who they are and where sure. they're gonna they're gonna go in the future. Absolutely. So there's uh, with most of investing, there's various degrees of risk, and mm-hmm. you can decide for yourself how you want to approach that if yes. you want to be riskier or not. There's not one way. I mean, and, and that's just going to be a common theme, I think, throughout this whole podcast, throughout the whole series, is that there's not one way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we talked a little about IPOs. Um, earlier, you mentioned dividends. So we talked mm-hmm. about how a company being successful and growing and, and be increasing their profitability, that's one way we can make money because we increase our share prices. But you also mentioned dividends. So what are we talking about when we talk about a dividend? So essentially, like I had said earlier in, in brief, is a passive form of income. But nonetheless, there's certain companies that from their income will distribute a sh- certain portion of that income directly to their investors. So not only are we looking for that, that growth in the company price that we can you know hopefully flip and make a profit on, but we will actually get paid over time. And the biggest thing is, say like Coca-Cola is a big one or Pepsi are big ones for dividends. They'll issue like maybe a $1 or $2 dividend every quarter and it's based quarterly most dividends are based quarterly and that's one or two dollars per share per share yes correct correct yes and so uh either quarterly or biannually and you'll you'll get this almost every year and if we start to see it falter is when we start to you know have some concern about the company because is there reasons they can't take from their income and then distribute to their owners is their money being diverted elsewhere maybe just to grow the company or is it money that's being lost elsewhere that we aren't able to capture and will that then dictate later on the price of the stock will we lose value so it's all these this interplay of things but so really it's it's, it's an incentive that the company uses to keep exactly. investors interested to keep and it's especially good for those that are older in age or those that have had a portfolio for quite some time to make that you know passive income so it's a safer means of taking in income we're not betting on whether or not this stock's going to be valuable or we're going to be able to capture volatility going forward with how the markets turn out. We're, we're safe and confident in we're going to just continually be delivered this one or two dollars every year from this company. It's just a nice passive means of income for us. Awesome. Yeah, I think that really covers it. I think, um, you know, stocks are not that crazily complicated. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, what goes into what makes a company successful yep. is complicated, right? And so that's what your money is tied to. Mm-hmm. But um, I want to talk about, okay, so we've talked about, you know, what, what's going on, what's the mechanics. Mm-hmm. Now, if I want to put my money in the, in the stocks, yep. how, the, how the heck do I do that? So, yeah, a good way, to, and that's a good question, because a good way is, you know, we hear all this, how are you going to go about it? A good way is to start looking for some of the big names out there. And we see people like, Schwab or E-Trade or even if you want to invest on a smaller level uh, platforms like Robinhood through uh, application devices. Um, but especially we want to go, like we were saying with the banks, we want to go with reputable sources to start investing this money. So you're taking your savings from one of the big banks and then putting it maybe toward one of these trading platforms. And people like Schwab have such things as intelligent portfolios where maybe it'll start trading for you, the intelligent portfolio itself will far follow certain algorithms so that you don't have to necessarily pay attention as much to individual companies or individual markets, but it'll do it for you. Or there's other means where you can do it actively and start trading on your own basis. If you feel confident in what we've been telling you, and you feel confident in developing and understanding companies, you can start trading on those platforms. So you take, and, and how it works is you take those savings, directly invest them, and then you know completely from there on, it's either tracked by the algorithm or it's tracked by the person themselves. Sure, so I mean basically, in basics, you pick a site, mm-hmm. a, a reputable site, Fidelity, uh, TD Ameritrade, mm-hmm. uh, E-Trade, Schwab, yeah. and you make an account, mm-hmm. and you just move your money into the account. Exactly. And then each site is going to have different services that, can, that yeah. they can provide. Mm-hmm. And you can look at those services and pick out which one works for you. Mm-hmm. These platforms are like any service company. They're mm-hmm. trying to get you to put their, your, their, your money into their yeah. site. Um, but to do that, they offer you different mm-hmm. things. So, you know, shop around a little bit, look to what site use as long as you stick with a reputable name yeah you'll pro- you'll be fine yeah. you're not going to get screwed over if you go with fidelity versus schwab mm-hmm. but maybe there's something that fidelity has that schwab doesn't that you like or vice versa mm-hmm. um that's the key is what it fits yeah. with you you're as long as you're putting your money in somewhere that is proven by time and by mm-hmm. other people using it that they're not going to piss away your money um you can you can trust them for the most part so mm-hmm. um 
And so, like, as far as, like, actually going and, and searching for a sock, it's not, even if you want to do it yourself, it's yeah. not too complicated, right? I mean, no. you can search the ticker symbol. Exactly. Like we were saying in the past, you can search uh, through the name. And, again, when, when you're typing in on a number of these sites, uh, it may not be as complex as, like, we were talking about with Edgar, where it shows everything. Mm -hmm. But it'll show, you know, previous historical movement in the price. Uh, yeah. It might show projected earnings it might show you know where market standing is for this type of company mm -hmm. uh if you're looking at commodities how the commodities have fared in the past or you know it, and especially with these sites they're sort of like news outlets so they'll be telling you you know where we're projecting the gold commodity to be now that uh short-term interest rates are rising yeah. or going down or that sort and so it's it's very helpful because you can couple your understanding from what you've read from other sources and then pair it with this understanding where you know professional analysts yeah with these companies value companies and uh, going forward how that ties together in, in your own you know internalization of that for sure yeah I think if you want like the practice mm -hmm. of buying and trading stocks do one of those simulators yeah, that, we, that we that we talked about talk in about. the first episode because mm -hmm. um, that basically it works the same way mm -hmm. um, you know the market is only open um, what nine to four. I believe five, depending on the after hours. Five, okay, nine. Okay, so it's it's only open for you know a certain portion of the day, mm -hmm. um, and during that time you can trade, you can sell, you can buy, mm -hmm. um, and then when the market closes, the, you know you have an opening price, mm -hmm. you have a closing closing price, yes. and whatever that price closes at, that's what your you know how your portfolio has changed mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so there's you know a lot of times it gives you the different information like what was the last closing price, mm -hmm. what was the opening price, you know last open, yeah. um, you know what was today's change, you know what was what's your overall change. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a lot of information yeah. um, at your uh, Especially once your portfolio starts to mature. It's going to capture sure. your own portfolio's performance. And you're Absolutely. going to be able to compare different asset allocations, determine you know whether or not I want to invest in a different market or why, if I want to divest in a company. So yeah. uh, it's all these you know, possibilities going forward. And it's a very nice tool. For sure, for sure. Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Price of your stock is going down. People are selling shares. <laughs> I get, you know what I mean. I think. So just to kind of recap what we talked about in this episode, is we talked about a good amount of material. If I woke up one morning and I wanted to invest in a stock, I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing my research. Yeah. I'm going to start looking at my co the companies that I maybe I've heard of, maybe I see in the headlines. Maybe I like them. Maybe I like them. Mm -hmm. Maybe I use them myself. Either any case, I'm going to start doing my research, right? Mm -hmm. And and then once I figure out the companies I like, I'm going to find a website that I like, mm -hmm. shop around. You know, Fidelity, T, uh, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Swap, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, Google just do a Google search. Mm -hmm. Um and, and 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 do your shopping around. Once I pick out a site I like, Make an account. Mm -hmm. Once I have an account, I can move my money into that account, the money that I've saved up, the capital that I worked so hard for. Um, put that into account, mm -hmm. and then I can start trading, right? As yeah. long as the market's open. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's that's the simplest way. I mean, of course, there's a lot of stuff we talked about that goes into it. And as the podcast moves forward, we'll cover some more in-depth mm -hmm. strategies and, and things like that, and some of the further mechanics. But I mean, I would say that was that's pretty much all it takes. It's not as intimidating as you as think. You would think it would be. Yeah, yeah it's really not. So, um, just to reiterate, you know, the goal of this podcast, we want to make it so anyone can understand what's going on mm -hmm. in in investing, and they can, you know, grab that freedom, get that financial f freedom for themselves. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. So, with that, hope you enjoyed the podcast, everybody. Um, this was episode two. Um, next episodes, we're going to be covering things like ETFs, ETNs, mutual Best funds, funds yeah. um, things like gold, assets. So thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.